Hi everyone, Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and welcome to my home recording studio. Since I have never done any show and tell of my home studio, I thought this is a good opportunity to make one so that not only to show you what I have in my studio and how I work, also a reference point and memory for me so when I move to my new studio which I'm building in my backyard, I'll have you know something to look at and see what my old home studio look like and how I worked in, in here and how it's going to be in there. So without any further ado, let me show you around. Okay, let's start. Behind me is the entry door that you normally don't see because the camera will be facing the other direction. And to my right, this is where all my junk goes on the shelves. Lots of um, paperwork, uh, documents, files, gadgets and things like that sit on my shelf. To the right we can actually see uh, closer to my desk and then you can see the first reflection point um, foam that I have to diffuse it and I also you can also see right in the corner there my base traps. A bit more to the right and we can actually see my desk. This is where all the action happens. Uh, this is where my monitor is, my uh, listening uh, speakers and all my outboard gear, my audio interfaces, they all sit at the bottom of the desk as well, more outboard gear and my PC sits um, behind uh, that chair as well. So we have a, we will get a closer look all the gear on my desk a um, bit later on. And you can see how on both corners I have my base straps and also a, a diffuser and absorber um, right at the back of the monitor to catch all of the sound reflections on that wall so I get nice and clear um, and accurate sound coming from my speakers. A bit more to the right this is where my keyboard sit, my Quark PA3X and my Roland D50 synthesizer. So it's a matter of quickly turning, doing some recording and then turning back and so on. It's quite easy to um, um, sort of work very close by to the desk. And finally another shelf. This is where all my microphones, my headphones and all of the other gear that I have, gadgets, uh, pedals um, and things, you know, uh, that actually sit on this shelf um, for easy access. Now as you know not being a guitar player that means guitars and guitar amps are um, not something I have. Um, this is a sim very simple um, electric guitar that I use just to test things or, or try things and um, most guitar players bring their own anyway and I also have uh, a PV Amp. I think that was that's the um, Viber. I think it's called the Viber. Yeah, that's right. That's the Viper. So it's a guitar amp um, and some effects in there as well. You know, not being a guitar player, I don't invest much in guitar equipment. But that's there. It's quite a handy one to have whenever um, is required when the musician uh, either forgot or didn't need to bring his amp he was happy to use that guitar so we can do the recording with it and so and that's pretty much all the um, musical equi equipment in this room there are a lot more musical instruments and things obviously in my garage but they don't normally live here looking at my desk all the information is displayed on my 29 by 9 aspect ratio, this um, long screen, um, which is quite handy. That means I have all my timeline displayed nicely on there. So uh, I'm not zooming in and out all the time. And running the monitor is the PC down there, which we'll get to in a, min in a minute. The sound coming in is from my uh, current uh, module that I'm using. The audio interface is the McKee Onyx Blackbird, which is a Firewire interface and some of the other gears which we'll go through uh, a bit later on. The sound coming out, they come out from my Personas 
uh, Eris E8, the 8 inch powered uh, speakers. And that's what I use for um, listening and mixing and mastering. I also have tiny crappy um, Logitech computer speakers so I can AB between the two making sure that it still sounds good even on the crappy speakers. And very quickly you can actually see that is my PC that I've built and if you want to know about it you can actually watch the video that I made on my channel. Uh, I personally made that PC and of course um, there's always a backup drive connected and it's backing up constantly every time any file gets changed it gets backed out on a two terabyte drive having a closer look of my gear my main gear is obviously the audio interface and currently i'm using the mackie onyx blackbird um, and got eight input and a few outputs as well as dual headphones and underneath that one i have my personas uh, studio channel which is a um, tube channel strip, a microphone or instrument strip, which is used as an insert to my um, two of the microphone inputs there I can use. And then underneath that one I have the Behringer Composer Pro XL, which is a two channel compressor, limiter and gate. Very useful for connecting keyboards, drum machines, synthesizers and sound modules through it so that you get nice and clean and undistorted sound source into the audio interface so it's very handy to control the inputs and underneath that one I have my TC Helicon VoiceWorks Plus which is a vocal effects unit it has obviously reverb and delay but on top of that it has pitch correction pitch adjustment uh, harmonizer um, um, male female vocal harmonizer and so on so it's a really great unit to create harmonies or pitch correction live pitch correction when you don't have the vocalist anymore so or if you want to create a group of background singers uh, again all of this get connected including some of the other keys that I'm gonna show you later on which is sitting at the bottom of the desk are all connected to my patch bay and if you um, haven't watched my uh, video on patch bay you can certainly go to my channel and watch that it's very very handy so at the moment all the connections are normalized that means anything that I plug in here will go to the correct route unless I want to redirect any of the inputs of my audio interface to any other um, outboard gear then I can use the patch leads to reroute them another great gear that I have that I use is the Personas fader port it's a fantastic um, gear to have, to control, so you're not reaching the mouse every single time. It is a motorized fader, so that fader is used to um, adjust the fader levels in Studio One. And at the same time, all of the uh, transport controls and everything else, very, very handy. But I normally have the this fader uh, connected to the master fader, unless I want to adjust it uh, separately because I use the Behringer uh, B control fader which are up to eight motorized faders to be used when I'm mixing so whenever I'm mixing I can use these faders to adjust the levels rather than using the mouse and the uh, other great advantage having motorized faders obviously apart from being recalled is you can adjust two things three things four things up to eight things at the same time so as you're adjusting the guitar to go up you can adjust the other background guitar to go down or as vocals going up guitars going down and so on so you can you can automate all of that in one go which you cannot do that with a mouse because with the mouse you can only control one fader at a time so that's quite handy to have but not necessary obviously but it's handy to have and also quite regularly my laptop which I use uh, for my daily use sits on the desk as well and being HP and for some reason this model came with Beats sound control which is absolutely crap the headphone output of this laptop is useless as anything um, so here comes my handy 
Yamaha AG03 audio interface, which is connected for USB, which I use um, to listen to um, whatever is happening on my laptop to get a decent and um, reasonable audio quality from it. At the same time, it's quite useful because I can use this to uh, do all my YouTube videos because it's got a microphone input, line inputs and outputs and so on, and loopback as well. So it's very handy for um, you know um, streaming as well. So if you want to learn about this one, I've done a few videos on it, the Yamaha AG03, so you can watch uh, those videos on my channel as well. On the left side of my desk, I have a few more gear um, that uh, I, you know, not regularly, but every now and then as they are uh, needed, um, are used as well. So right at the top, I have my Phonic compressor, which is a two-channel compressor, the PCL3000. Um, it's, it's got really a nice um, sound, especially with the compression. Obviously, you've got the full control of attack and release and uh, the threshold and compression ratio, as well as gate in there. So it's quite useful. I use it sometimes to connect, uh, you know, as I mentioned with the other uh, Behringer one, uh, you know, synthesizer, keyboards, guitars. It's very nice for guitars, um, you know, after the pedals, you can just plug it in there and be able to control um, the, um, the the output so that when feeding into the audio interface it doesn't distort so it's really nice and handy then I also have the um, Behringer Multicom Multicom Pro that's the Behringer Multicom Pro which is a four channel um, compressor and gate it's really useful uh, I have not used it yet but I have purchased it uh, thinking ahead because well, I purchased it for a project, but ended up not happening for um, four, four mics. So I'd be able to control four mics, setting up a drum set to be able to have um, all my uh, microphones connected to it. So that when the drum is playing, I've got some control of the microphone signal, you know, before they go into my audio interface. But uh, I guess once I have my new... Um, studio where live drums can be set up they will become uh, useful and handy i bought it for that purpose but uh, the project never um, happened so um, it's good to have anyway and underneath that one is the behringer ultra ultra voice pro vx3000 now this is a, a voice uh, mic pre channel or a channel strip because it does have uh, gate, compressor, EQ, as well as uh, the easer. It's very, very, and it's got tube emulation in there as well. It's very, very useful for um, voiceovers. I haven't used it for vocal recording, even though that's what the purpose is, but uh, it's really good for voiceovers because it's, uh, you can adjust all of those settings before it reaches your audio interface. So you get really nice, um, uh, nice controlled source audio source going into your interface and that's what i actually use i've been using lately for all of my youtube um commentary that i do or all the recording that i do so it goes through that so it's nice and clean underneath that one is my alto four channel headphone amplifier and it's a really good one as well to the fact that uh, not only we got for headphones output uh, on top of to the fact that you have treble and bass control um, level control um, you have separate input so if the guitar player want to plug their guitar in there so they can have manual control um, as they doing the takes you know they can have full control of it uh, it also has mono as well as left and right mute and you know how sometimes um, vocalist would like to take their um, one of their headphones out so and listen only with one um, that means you know the sound coming out of that headphone can leak into the microphone but with this headphone amplifier you can actually turn that off so there's no sound escaping from that headphone and you know you, you get a better take but it's really powerful and you know uh, you don't even need to turn 
halfway and it's already blasting in your ear. So um, that's very handy for if you've got multiple people that uh, are here and you're recording. Uh, underneath that one are my old uh, gear. I have a um, direct drive tape, cassette tape player, which most of the time it's only used for playback purposes, it's for uh, transferring cassettes into CDs or lectures into uh, mp3 files and so on and an old equalizer and a couple of um, VHS video machines actually as a note one of these video players which is a hi-fi stereo uh, VHS forehead unit I used to use that to master my songs on so that we could take that uh, to the duplication company to duplicate them into cassettes because obviously you know cassettes weren't um, as good and I only had four track <laughs> four track cassette recorder back then we're talking about 30 years now so um, so I used to use that to record my master to get a better quality for the distribution so anyway that's another side note that, that's all the other gears that I have um, sitting underneath my desk. Of course I have a lot more gear sitting in uh, on shelves in my garage which um, there was no point of uh, showing them because I'm not gonna bring them out and I'm not gonna take the camera into my garage because it's a mess in there. But um, yeah that's pretty much uh, what I work with uh, on a week-to-week -week basis on, or on a day-to-day basis here. I've got everything that I need um, right at my fingertips. And I hope that um, in my new home studio, um, in my backyard that I'm building, uh, I will have pretty much the same gear, except there will be more room for, for the gear and most likely more room for musicians to come in and do recording. So um, that's my uh, home recording studio nine. Well, now you have the insight of what my home studio looks like. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio.